does the producer of Gossip Girl have what it takes to remake a popular British sci-fi series? Just wait till you hear what Brian has to say about it. Can't get enough of Uncle George? I sure can't. One of his other series is coming to sci-fi. We've got a detail on that, plus a few hints on the final season of Chuck, which I'm loving so far. Nigel's got the latest from the multiverse, and we've got an interview you will not want to miss on today's installment of Slice. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. Warning. Effects of time shifting may occur. This is Dr. Michio Kaku. I'm Peter Mayhew. This is Trisha Halper, number six from Battlestar Galactica. Hi, this is Colin Ferguson with Sci-Fi Channel Eureka, and you're listening to Slice of Sci-Fi. Sliceofsci-Fi.com Hey, welcome everyone to another Slice of Sci-Fi. I'm Michael Armenegay. I'm Brian Brown. I'm Sam Roberts. I'm Tim Anamek. I'm Treble. Chubbo! Chubbo! Interesting, but trouble. Speaking uh, of which, we better get down to the news because I got some ranting to go. Okay. And now, the news. Okay. That's not the Already. first story because the first story is pretty good, actually. Ooh, right. So, okay. So while the final season of Chuck may have seen, may be seen as the victory lap for the show's fans, that doesn't mean we should get comfortable or think that nothing game changing will happen in this final episodes. Okay. Okay. Speaking to Blaster, co-creator Chris FedEx said that there are a lot of things that can go wrong. Really? Now, FedEx okay. hints that we'll, we'll discover uh, the intersect works differently in Morgan than it does in Chuck. Right. Hmm. Oh. We're already kind of seeing that. Right. He also And also, while the series will return to its roots of spy missions featuring Chuck and Sarah, those missions will have an impact on the newlyweds' home life as well. So they've gotten married, of course, they're in love, but it doesn't mean that is the end of the story. You don't get a ride off in the sunset. Chuck and Sarah are going to be struggling to achieve these dreams as a married couple who run their own spy company. Oh, that is so cool. I'm a little bored by their relationship, to be yeah. honest. Oh, yeah, honestly, me too. Yeah. So Actually, I'm kind of find, finding this whole season boring so far. Okay, yeah, well, I like the first episode. First episode, so we'll see. Now, FedEx adds that Casey will be making a big adjustment this year as he works, this for, I love. Yeah, works for Chuck and the new spy crew, and that Casey will get... Or romantic interest this season in the form of Carrie Ann Moss. Really? Oh, yes. That could be good. As And her character is Gertrude Verbonsky, the head of the spy company, directly competing with Chucks. That <laughs> wow, I'm excited nice. about. Yeah. Okay, okay. Is anybody else thinking Archer? Kind of. That's. I think bit. they kind of, maybe they did mm. kind of take a little bit of nod from that. I don't know. So the terrifying thing to me is one of my TV gossip people has put out a blind item that um, a show is planning on killing somebody off in their final season and named one of four shows it could be, and Chuck was one Chuck of them. Chuck was one of them. So Ooh, may okay. or may not be an impending death. We don't know. Hmm. Well, you know, how f- I'm, I'm amazed okay that. that I'm amazed that Chuck has made it as long as it has because really the premise on this uh, it's a tribute to the writer and and how brilliant the writers are that they've been able to keep this thing fresh and keep it as interesting as but it has a life it has a shelf life guys it really does with the success of game of thrones on hbo it should come as no surprise that hollywood is eager for more projects from the mind of george R. R. martin (laughs) yes Uh, Yes. sci-fi has announced they will adapt the anthology series wild Wild Cards. cards as a movie which could potentially become a series of movies or a tv show if it's successful nice i'm excited because i like the wild cards Uh, Book yeah. series, but mm-hmm. Siffy, Darren? yeah, but I mean, maybe we'll see. It could, could be, be good. Done, could, could be, be done good. right. Could be good. Could be maybe. And a lot of that, a lot of that's really going to depend on budget. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If they yes. give it their, you know, two point seven dollar budget that they give for the <laughs> normal Saturday night stuff, it's not going to work. Yeah. The anthology series, edited by Martin, follows a group of people with superpowers, showing how the powers impact their daily lives. Melinda Snodgrass, a writer who has contributed several entries in the long-running novel, will write the script for the film. Okay, okay. I'm kind of so, good with that. She does some good stuff. So let's uh, let's do one last little thing, and I'll I'll rant for just a smidge. Okay. Uh, now in its third season in Britain, Misfits, which is awesome by the is way, it, for the yes. third season, yes, mm-hmm. follows a group of young people who are sentenced to community service and become imbued with supernatural powers after an electrical storm. Now, the series has been a hit in England, and it's ready to make the jump to American shores. Oh, awesome remade as an American. Of course. Yeah. Oh, for crying out loud. It, it Do better. they not learn anything? Now, Gossip Girl and Chuck producer Josh <laughs> Schwartz will serve as one of the two producers for American Pilot. Uh. The other is Stephanie Savage, who's currently the producer on CW's Heart of Dixie. 
Oh, oh yes, this will be That's fantastic. Confidence inspiring. <laughs> ah, makes me mad. Like, oh my god, I have superpowers. Jeez Louise. Why do we? Why? Why do we have to keep doing this? Especially if you've seen Kill Misfits, the because love. the tone of that show and the tone of the series these people have produced. Not so much. It's sexy. It's very foul mouthed. I don't see how it's going to make a good American one on. It, it, you know, not it, not it, it just yeah. annoys not the hell out it. of me. I just, I, I mean, re, I, I rewatched season three of Being Human, the real one, and <laughs> I went, oh my god, how can you? Why would you even try to mess with this? Yeah. It's just brilliant the way it is. Leave it alone. Let it be. Let it be. You know, we need some other news. Ryan, be happy. Hello, I am Nigel Blackwood. Welcome to our newest program, In Depth, where we pause and take a detailed look at one television program. Joining me today is Professor Cameron of the Intergalactic Television Institute. Thank you for joining us today, Professor. I think you're Nigel. Tell us what what's going on. Sorry to interrupt your show, gentlemen. We have a slight alien infestation. Nothing to concern yourself with, sir. We shall have it cleared off in just a moment. All right, get out the trackers, boys. Let's go. Uh, okay. Well, let's keep going. Professor, what program are you wanting to talk about? We're going to talk about Terra Nova, a horrible new television program. For those unfamiliar with the program, it's about the evil guy who has come back from the dead from Avatar who now has his own command on a place called Terra Nova. People can only get there one way, through a Bajoran wormhole in a place that was called Tarak Nova, but now it's Terra Nova. The story revolves around a marshal who has snuck into town, but is still given a place of authority, along with his annoying children, Will and Holly, who all fall over a waterfall and who are immediately attacked by a puppet, dinosaurs, and uh, there's a polar bear, in the jungle, but I like Hurley, he was pretty good. Uh, the part I don't like most about the show is that they're stealing ideas from so many other movies and television shows. Yes. Let's go Seal this door. Uh, gentlemen, we seem to have a slight containment problem. I'd advise you to head to the nearest escape pod. We are setting the ship to self-destruct in one minute. All right, give the order to move out. Keep firing, boys. Boom, boom, boom. Well, it looks like the show's over for the day. Let's take you now back to the Draco Vista Studios. I'm Michael R. Menengay. I'm Summer Brooks. I'm Michael Stackpole. And I'm Brian Brown. Join us for an exciting romp through literature and books. Romp? <laughs> We're not romping. I've, We're supposed I've, to be cool. That's Smooth. right. Okay. It's the cool smoothing sounds. It's the smoothing sounds. sounds, the smoothing of... sounds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but romp just brings forth images of Michael in tights, and I'm so not going there. <laughs> Which well, Michael? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Neither one would be very good. If you would like to join this thing that we do every week, it's called Dragon okay, Page okay, Cover okay, to hold, Cover. Hold, hold, hold. Take two, take two, two. <laughs> Welcome to Dragon Page Cover to Cover, where the elite meet to discuss literature. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the tight two and just... Yeah. <laughs> Dragon Page Cover to Cover, where you'll never know what you're going to get next. And welcome back to more of Slice of Sci-Fi. I'm Michael R. Menengay. And I'm Brian Brown. And Mike, you know what show's coming back? It's probably already back by the time this airs. Mm, why, that would probably be one of our favorite shows. Yeah, that's very true. That's right. And on the phone today, we have McKenna Melvin. Now, maybe most people will go, well, who exactly is she on the show? Well, she can't be. No, no, no. She plays John Casey's daughter, that's Alex right. McHugh, on the show. Welcome. You. So this is the last season of Chuck, just when you're getting your star on. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, so, so what can we expect from 
Alex and Morgan this season, I guess, is probably the first thing it's, out the gate. It's the last <laughs> season, so you guys have to amp it up to the to the nth degree, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. This season is packed full of so much fun and unexpected things that I, even me, while I was reading, was like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is happening <laughs> um, for everybody, everyone. It is. I'm so excited. It's so good. Um, and me, Morgan, I mean, I'm not going to give any spoilers away, but well. we definitely had a blast. Um, it, it, there's a lot of fun stuff between us. Oh, okay. And then, of course, you, oh. you, you, no. We also do. We also look in more into your and your father John's relationship. Correct. Correct. We do. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, it, there's a lot of um, different things that we find out, and different stuff that happens with John's character. And oh, this is so hard because I don't want to say anything. <laughs> Yeah, because they'll send out the, you know, because, you know, it's only the fifth, only last season. It's not like they'll fire you. Oh, wait. Never. <laughs> no, the helicopters will come over. They'll yeah. drop down on lines and I'm take all the I'm studio. like snipers through the window. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I understand. I understand that we can't, you know, give, you know, you're not going to give many spoilers and everything. But so as a fifth season, how do you feel it wraps everything up? Well, um, you know, I actually haven't read the final script oh, yet, so ooh. I don't even know. Uh, we're, we're still on, uh, we're almost to the end, but we haven't gotten the final script. It's not off the presses yet, so I'm not sure. But so far, I can honestly say that there has been some times when I'm at home reading the script where I have, like, laughed out loud and cried and had all these crazy things. It, and you're in the world, so you know that it's not make believe. You know, I mean, you know that it's make believe. I don't know how to explain it. So it's just so good this season, and I'm honestly super excited to see how it ends myself. That's really cool. So, what uh, has been the most uh, the, the the most interesting thing that has come about from this character? The place that you didn't think this character was going to go? Because I know you had some some interesting places that uh, right. Alex went <laughs> last season. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Um, I guess, you know, it's all been a surprise. I started this car- this role, this job, as a one-word co-star. I had no idea I was even going to have more than one day of work. And all of a sudden, here I am, like, on my third season with the show. And, and I just, every time I get a new script and every time I find out where what I'm doing next, I'm just like, I'm blown away. I mean, when I got that uh, episode where I got to kick, or kick Adam Baldwin's butt in the parking lot, oh, I was yeah. like, amazing, this is amazing, can't believe this is happening. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, it's just it keeps getting more fun. So, you know, it's funny because we always ask, you know, when we get the stars on, you know, who's the joker and everything? And, and Robbie kind of spoiled it for us. Uh, the Robbie uh, Robbie Duncan did for us. And he said Yvonne is probably the most tomboyish jokey girl on the set for sure and among everybody actually so uh 100 yeah and we know that so you know who is the one person that you would say deviates most from the character we see on the screen to how they kind of are that's an interesting question um i don't know it would be really i don't know i guess I can. I have no idea who it is. I mean, <laughs> maybe no. <laughs> I don't know. Tough question. It's, it's not almost about everybody. There's elements of everybody's personality that they obviously like, bring to their character, but nobody is 100% who they are. Um, but I will say that it's so much fun to be on that set, and it's painful because it's like there's so much laughter that happens a lot of the time that you're like, okay. I can't stop. I need to stop laughing now. <laughs> it, it comes across. It seems like you all have a very um, wonderful working relationship and obviously enjoy shooting the show because otherwise, and it comes across. It really does. Yeah. it's. I mean, I just, I feel so lucky to be a part of it. And I, obviously I came in after there had kind of been this cast dynamic that I've been in place for a really long time. And the way everybody embraced me, whether it be the cast, the writers, the crew, everybody was just 
beyond what I could have expected, and I feel so excited every time I go to work. And that is such a unique, wonderful thing to have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it 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 shows. I mean, it, it, there's so much family that happens there, and I mean, I, I just want to work at the Buy More. Uh, you yeah. know, <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't? I mean, really. Yeah. So, so McKenna, okay. let's talk about your your newfound kind of love, and uh, that is acting, writing, as well as co-creating Amber Lake. That's something new for you. Yeah, it is. Um... It, it, Amber Lake is a film that me and two of my friends, one of whom is actually my cousin as well as a friend, we all got together and not, it was a time when there wasn't a lot going on for the three of us and we wanted to work and create our own work. And so we thought maybe we'll make a web series because that seemed plausible and possible. Um, and we ended up getting funding and shooting a feature in Michigan. So it was kind of more than we could have expected that happened. Um, and it was it was such an awesome experience, and it made me realize how much I love to be on all sides of the creative process. And it's something I hope to continue to do in the future. That's really, that really is cool. Very cool. Yeah, and it, it's kind of like, you know, it, you know you're, you come from a family, you know, of, uh, you know, drama and theater and everything. So it just seems to me like a natural progression that eventually, you know, you would be behind the camera or writing the script for X, Y, Z. Yeah, I mean, my mom is a theater director. And so while theater and, like, film and TV are different in terms of the way they're structured and right. how the director plays a role in certain ways, um, I think that that's something at one point I would love to take on. I, you know, I spent so much of my childhood and even now watching my mom play that role in a, a production and it's something that excites me. So I hope one day down the line uh, I have an opportunity to do that. And writing is something that I was always, I didn't write Amber Lake, but I have been writing, we co-created and we have story credits on it and we've, workshop and then our writer Joe Robert Cole went and actually physically typed everything out. Writing is something that always scared me. Um, and I am a firm believer that if something scares you, it's the thing that you should be doing. So whether you're good at it or not, there's a reason, you know, facing your fears is really important. So I've been writing a lot with my writing partner and it's also been something that's been a really exciting, challenging thing to uh, do. That is awesome philosophy. So in other words, we see the next next big novel coming out by you, right? <laughs> okay, let's not be crazy here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that is really cool. I mean, because... It sounds uh, like a haiku or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, book of haikus. That's fine. There you go. <laughs> haikus about Chuck. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, tell us really quick, because we're, we're winding down here, what's next for you now that, you know, I mean, we know Chuck's still, f you know, finishing up, but after Chuck, what are you going to be doing? I don't know. Um, there's so many opportunities that uh, may potentially be happening. I have a few balls in the air, and I'm just kind of excited to see what the next step inevitably is. Um, the future feels a little bright. To sound cliche, but and I hope that I just continue to work and I don't have to be a waitress again. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's always that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, you know, I I'm right there with you because you know I uh, I never want a waitress again myself. I know it, wearing those Not stupid that little dresses. There's anything wrong with waitressing. Right. I am. <laughs> It's just, up my apron. I, I just don't have the legs for the dress anymore. That's the yeah, problem. Yeah, me either. And it, the heels <laughs> kill me. Let me That's tell you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, McKenna, sure. thanks for spending some time with us talking mm -hmm. talking about all your different projects and Chuck today with us. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Not a problem. We'll uh, have all the links on the website, of course. And, of course, folks, tune in to Chuck because it's the last season and it's just going to be awesome. I know it is. Absolutely. All right, folks, we'll be back with more Slice of Sci-Fi right after this. Dragon Moon Press, bringing you some of the most exciting new authors in sci-fi and fantasy. Their titles open new worlds and bring unforgettable characters to readers just like you. Bring the magic and wonder of dragons to your child with Dragon's Fire Wizard's Flame by Michael R. Menengay. Write your own story with a complete guide to writing fantasy. Books by Dragon Moon Press. 
sci-fi, fantasy, and beyond. Order these titles from your local retailer or visit the website at dragonmoonpress.com. Alien detected in Sector 5. Hey, Slicer, Sean from Edwards with more... News from Flight Test Land. Space Launch Edition. SpaceX has been busy. This week they announced that they had finalized the design for their next generation Dragon capsule and Falcon launch system. They're not, they're being mum as to which it, version it is, if this is the version that will be fully reusable or not. Though, fully reusable is a, uh, not quite correct, because there are little bits that won't be. But, for the most part, it will be 90, at least 90% reusable. Also, the, uh, Next Dragon test capsule has arrived at Cape Canaveral and is being readied for launch. This is the one that they will hopefully test their docking mechanism with the International Space Station. Beyond that, the next Progress capsule from the Russians launched and it did make successful docking with the space station so we can keep the space station operational. Thank you, my Russian friends. And finally, also from Asia, the Chinese have launched their next test mission to their space lab. This will be an unmanned docking of a spacecraft to the, the space station to make sure that their docking mechanism works and to make sure that it is safe for human habitation. So it looks like the Chinese are catching up, folks. SpaceX, it's all on you guys. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's kidding. really nice, cool. Yeah. Very nice report there, Sean. Thank you so much. Indeed, yeah. And uh, he's Very driving cool. into Area 51 right now to get some behind-the-scenes <laughs> oh, shots yeah. of the space aliens. I'm yeah. hoping that <laughs> we'll have some information we want video. on that soon. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, well, we got a lot of things to talk about. Not a whole lot of time to yep. do it. So let's let's cover it real quick. Uh, so I really want to talk about Grimm and Once Upon a Time because Sam mm -hmm. and I have both been watching them. Um, yes. And they're both really good. I, I thought Grimm was better right out the gate. The first episode really had me hooked right off the bat. But if you like procedural crime dramas and then throw in the fairy tales, it's pretty awesome. For Grimm? Yes, yes. for okay. Grimm. Although the lead is disturbingly looking like Brandon <laughs> Routh. Please give him a haircut. Over, it's, yeah. it's distracting. <laughs> uh, Once Upon a Time is good. Uh, like I say, I like the the present day version of it not the fairyland version of it um i don't know about you sam um the fairyland version i'm kind of with you i hadn't really thought about it till you mentioned it but the fairyland version is aggressively fairy thou shalt and this and that it tends to be a little more campy than the Very real wor world version um i'm really invested in uh emma i like her yes. very much she's a good character you give me a premise because all I see is billboards. Sure. So fairy tale characters have been cursed by the evil queen, right? Snow mm -hmm. White, she yeah. of course cursed them. And they all now live in a modern Maine town called Storybrook. Storybrook, yep. Storybrook, Storybrook okay. Maine. And they don't remember that they're fairy tale characters. They're living their lives. The regular lives. <laughs> oh, living yeah. regular lives. Like yes. Looks like a brilliant yeah. premise. At, at this point, we're not <laughs> even sure if the evil queen in the in the, in the modern <laughs> version knows. They're, they've been very tight-lipped about it. But so it's interesting to see what they're real life professions are and how yes. that equates to what they were okay. in fairy tales it did Fantastic. by the way just get a full season pickup so we'll oh, be seeing a lot more of it and robert carlisle awesome he plays rumple stillskin <laughs> nice awesome. really good if you like if you like rush at all from from uh, you know Stargate Universe, absolutely really good just, just catch it i think there that. was like a happily ever after thing like in the 90s and i was it, yes. I yeah. having flashes of that when yeah. i saw nothing no. good no nothing good. No, no no and if you're a breaking bad fan at all giancarlo esposito yes. is that his name yes right. um it plays the mirror the queen's mirror Oh, and cool. he's, and he's fantastic. Mirrors. Awesome. So, so I, I want to take a, just a minute to create some, as much buzz as I possibly can for <gasps> Lost Girl. Oh, Because, no. oh, my God. Lost yes. Girl is just absolutely awesome, awesome. Okay. I have been enjoying this. And the fact that they are bringing this un disturbed from oh, su undisturbed supposedly even. supposedly you, from, from Canada. And In they are actually January, giving February. us the original really yeah. good show. I, I, I want to give them huge props, and I want to get as many people watching this as possible because this is a fantastic show. And it's it, coming out it really, really January, is. February, I think yeah, Kevin Batchelder said. Yeah. Yeah. Very so. soon, actually, coming up. So please watch it. Watch when it comes out because it's, it's a great little and show And the other well. thing to get hyped about? 
What's that? Pumpkin chunkin', pumpkin chunkin', pumpkin chunkin' is going on this weekend right yes. now as we speak, and we got the um, the countdown to pumpkin chunkin', the which road ev- two, road two every yeah, Thursday Grant, night, right? Every yep. Thursday night for the next three weeks, with the final thing happening right on Thanksgiving, and it. Oh, nice! We should be there. We should be hanging out I in the know. Discovery. We we say that the every year. Every One year. of these years, we've got to go someday when we hit the lottery. Hey, Mike, Indeed. you know. You have as better chances hitting the lottery as you do as not playing the lottery, Mike. I do, and I, I've been not playing for a while now, so I, I'm, I'm due anytime. Eventually, that'll pay off for yeah. you. That's mm-hmm. right. So <laughs> <laughs> One wow. dollar at a time. <laughs> anyway. Oh, that sounds suspiciously like Hollywood math to me. Mm. <laughs> I know Maybe. not of what you speak. I don't know what you speak. You know, hey, come on. The rules of acquisition say, Tim. Indeed. That's right. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Anything anyway, else? no, that is, uh, well, I, I mean, there's always more, but well, we're out of time, okay. unfortunately. So the number is 206-339-TREK. That's 206-339-8735. We do a feedback show that happens every Friday. So in a couple days, folks, check the website. To, check the website, and you'll be able to hear about us talking about your comments that you sent in to talk mm-hmm. about our comments and whatever. Yeah. It's very meta. So it, it <laughs> is incredibly meta. <laughs> it's but it's circular, fun. like the seasons, like the circular it's, life. It's our interaction right. with our fans. It is yes. the circular. Yes. It's the circle life. It's the closest life. you'll get to trouble. They're pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> with your clothes on. Hey. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> My father's <laughs> watching. Oh, oh, sorry. Wrong. Uh, I was being innocently honest. <laughs> right. There's nothing innocent about Brian. It's <sighs> bath night. It's it the is. name. <laughs> Please send your donations to... <laughs> <laughs> Bye.